Good morning, New Life Church, friends of New Life Church. So glad that you join us online for day three of prayer and fasting. Uh, it's been a great week for me and my family. Despite the snow changing our normal rhythm of the week, I do know that the snow, you know, it's fun at first, but then now it's running scores like you're ready for it to go. Primarily because you're ready for your sweet, and precious little kids to get out of your hair, to stop asking what's for lunch, to stop fighting with their siblings and get back to school. And seriously though, I hope you've been able to have additional time to pray. You're seeing fruit from starting your year off and being rooted in prayer. I know Pastor Rick, he's seeing fruit from prayer and fasting. He's been praying for 23 years. For Alabama to go down and Nick Saban just resigned. Pastor Rick said it's been a successful week of prayer and fasting. Saban is gone. All right, being serious. Today, we're going to be praying for our church. The vision that God has given to Pastor Rick, to our campus pastors. Listen, for the past 23 years, we've been a great commission church. In our message, Roots and Fruit, in our Rooted series we started this year, we closed that message out by reminding you all of three important words. Listen, the Lord showed us recently in the Great Commission, and, and these are these words, they, they are, that we're going to be, that we're going to go, that we're going to do. And let me tell you what, that's who we are as a church. Let, let's take a minute. I want to read this Great Commission again, and let's hone in on these words. We're going to read it in the message translation. I don't always read from that translation, but I want to look at it today in that translation. So starting in verse 16, it says, Meanwhile, the 11 disciples, that they were on their way to Galilee, they were headed for the mountain, for which Jesus had set for their reunion. Like, I want to stop there. Like, can you imagine? I just can't imagine being there. Can you, I want you to just try to see it. Can you imagine, like, if you heard from Peter or John or Thomas or somebody, you heard, hey, Jesus is alive. Like, I saw him. Like, we were meeting the other night, and he walked through the wall. Scared us all to death. <laughs> Thought he was a ghost at first. But he's for real. He's alive. Like, you can see the scars in his hands and feet. Like, can you imagine that? I, I can't imagine that moment. Here's what's interesting, though. You had two different groups of people there. Look, look at this. It says, it says, the moment they saw him, they worshiped him. I, I think that would be me. I believe it would be you. But, but here's what's interesting. Look at this other group. It says some, though, they held back, like not sure about worship, about risking themselves totally. Like, I just, that kills me to, to read that. It also hurts me when I see people in our church honestly holding back, not being willing to risk themselves. Because here's what I know, no matter what, no matter which group you're in, listen what it says next about Jesus. It says that Jesus undeterred that he went right ahead and he gave his charge. Listen, he says, I got a mission here. Listen what he says. He says, God authorized and commanded me to commission you to go, to go out, train everyone you meet far and near in this way of life, marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. And then he says, I'll be with you. Listen, but here's the important thing. He's going to be with us, but are we going to be with him? That, that's the real question. He says, I'll be with you as you do this day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. Listen, we as a church, we as a staff, we're praying that we would, all of us, we'd be rooted in him. We would be rooted in the church. We'd be faithful in attending weekend services, worship nights, life groups, serve teams. Like you're going to be here. That we're, we're praying that we would all as a church, we're going to go with him. We're going to go together. We're going to go after the things he has for us. Go, go after those people on the fringes in our church. Go after the lost, the broken. Go, go after the people that nobody else is going after. And then lastly, we as a church would do our part in the church. Do what the Lord's asking of us outside the four walls. Do what the word says. Do what we know to do. Do the things that others aren't willing to do. All right, but here's what I know. I'm going to slow down. Some of you, you had your fasting coffee this week. I'll slow down for a minute. Here's what I need you to think about. The church is made up of you. Are you going to be rooted here? That's the real question. Are you going to be rooted here? Are you going to go with us? Are you going to do what your leaders, pastors, and what the Lord 
is asking you to do. Because if you're willing to be rooted in the church, go where God has taken our church, do what God is asking of us as a church, then we're going to be the church that Jesus spoke to Peter about in Matthew chapter 16, verses 16 through 19. Let's look at it. It says, Simon Peter, he answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, son of Jonah, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not been, has not revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Let, let's all be committed to being the kind of church that the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. The kind of church that's being led by the Holy Spirit, that's following after Jesus, seeing marriages and families being restored, people being set free, hopes and dreams being restored. The kind of church that we're fighting for the next generation. We're doing everything in our power. Give them places to meet so they can find a true relationship with Jesus, do it alongside like-minded young people. We can be the kind of church. We're so hungry to grow in His Word and, and, and mature in our relationship with Jesus and with all the important relationships in our life. The kind of church that we serve our community, the way Pastor Rick and Pastor Marcus and Hunter and myself and so many of us, we, we saw you serve, be the church when a massive tornado destroyed and devastated parts of Little Rock, North Little Rock, Sherwood, Jacksonville last year on uh, March the 31st. And, Let's be that kind of church that, that serves our community. Be that kind of church that stays together like a well-trained army. You know, you've seen a well-trained army. They're in lockstep. Let's be that type of, of church. We're well-trained believers with a mission of bringing the life-giving message of Jesus to our friends, to our family, to see them become fully devoted followers of Christ. That's, that's who God's calling us to be. So let, let me take a minute. I, I want to pray over you before then you take some time to pray over our church today. So, so let me pray for you right now. Lord, I just pray that we would be rooted in you, that we would be rooted in the church, that we would be who you called us to be, Lord. We would go wherever you're calling us to go, Lord Jesus. We'd be led by your Holy Spirit as we're, as we're following after Jesus, it, it, as we're supporting and believing in the next generation, Lord, and then all of us, in New Life Church, we would desire growth to serve one another. We would stay on mission going after our friends and family and that we would just do what you called us to do, Lord. We, we just love you. We praise you. We thank you for what you're doing in our church. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives and how you're speaking to us during this time of prayer and fasting. We pray this right now in Jesus' name, amen and amen. So look, now it's time for you to go. Take a few minutes, take some time and pray. We're going to help you out. We're going to have some prayer points come up on the screen. After you've had some time to pray, we're also going to have a song for you to worship with that. So now it's time to go ahead and pray there in your home.
Jesus, be